Traditional sweet recipes from Malta Volume 2 soon available at www.traditionalmaltysweets.com Traditional sweet recipes, creating a small slice of Malta that feels like home. Valura fil programmu kif semmejt fil-bidu il-mistednin tal-lum u matnejn mill-sponsor stana u minnaw niħu l-opportunita sabiex nir-ringrazzja l-sponsor skolla tana li permet tala poċ taħom etu maslulkom dan il-ħames staġun. Our guest today is a very familiar face because we met um, Sharon back in season four um, when we talked about not only yourself but also your um, book traditional sweet recipes from Malta. So thank you so much for having us back again. Thank you. Thank you both for coming and thank you for joining us today. Well, we've got a very nice surprise later on in this interview. That's why we love doing our interviews with Sharon <laughs> because you. there's always a treat at the end of them. Thanks for that. So, um, we met you for in season four and we talked about your um, first publication, Traditional yes. Sweet Recipes from Malta. Yes. Um, uh, you have since, um, or you're about to release yes. your second, the second volume. Okay. Tell us more about how this came about. Okay, um, a lot of thought went into creating this second volume um, and actually thinking about should I create another volume? Because uh, I had a lot of people approach me for recipes, more recipes, specific recipes, uh, but beyond those requests, which were quite a few, I felt within myself there was more to give and there was uh, a greater path to follow. So I pursued my second volume of mm -hmm. Maltese Sweets, which has been a lot of work, not only in recipe development, um, I've also went to Malta a few times to create the photography internally. Um, so yeah, it was, just something within me that said I've got more work yet to do and people are telling me they'd like more recipes so it's a win-win. <laughs> so what are we to expect in the second volume? Um, it's uh, a carry-on from the first, um, some quality recipes once again because that's my focus, um, a nice varied selection as the first um, but I think people will be quite happy with what they see. Well, I'm going to be for sure because I know that you have traditional Maltese alcohol. I do, I do. I've, uh, last volume actually had limoncello. Mm -hmm. uh, this time we've gone with a bite house, so the prickly pear liqueur. We've gone with anisette because that's great in baking as mm -hmm. well. And the amaretto, which is mm. amaretto, which is beautiful mm -hmm. on its own or in baking. So some things to complement your baking, but but also you can serve separately to people. What about this beautiful cover that you've got? It's just, oh, it screams you. Malta, doesn't it? Thank you so much. It does. Uh, my husband and myself took that in our trip in December. Um, it's actually in Robert mm -hmm. and it's just a narrow street and that's the name of the street. It's called Tri Idea, which right. is gorgeous. <laughs> um, it's, it's the all-time classical Malta. Um, it's where I'd love to live <laughs> if I yeah. had a choice. But yes, it's in Robert Malta. Mm. Thank you for that. I also noticed that you have um, sweet pastizzi, if I'm not mistaken. That's right, sweet pastizzi. Tell us how you developed that. And, um, you know, we're so used to, well, in Australia, we are used to sweet pastizzi, yes. like um, Nutella pastizzi, for yes. example, apple pastizzi. Yes. Um, uh, but it's not very traditional Maltese. So there is um, a twi an Aussie twist to it? There is an Australian twist. Um, I actually did return to Malta in spring. And believe it or not, in the Festa Talafrauli, they were selling strawberry pastizzi. Wow. So sweet pastizzi in Malta does make an appearance, mm -hmm. but because pastizzi in Malta is such a staple of a lot of people's diet, they don't need to extend and diversify their range. But obviously within Australia, we have here. Um, so my flavors include apple, I've gone for a classic chocolate brownie, which is beautiful, and mixed berry, I think, is now top my favourite. So oh. some beautiful flavours there. So what's our treat today? <laughs> uh, the treat today is a white European nougat. Uh -huh. Now, I wanted to touch on this because not only is it, is it a good recipe, there are lots of tips to be had firsthand because mm -hmm. there is a bit of technicality to it. And secondly, within the second volume, I've included 
a different range of flavours because mm -hmm. um, after some demonstrations I had some people approach me telling me you know their husband or a family member was nut intolerant and that brought me to thinking look I'll create a, uh, a few more flavours to cater for those people as well. But nougat sounds so hard to me. I, mean, um, I wouldn't even think of making nougat. <laughs> um, it's quite straightforward and the great thing about it is that you don't need a great amount of equipment. A candy thermometer, a hand mixer is all that you need. Um, it's all about the recipe and the quality of the recipe and I'm happy to say we've got that. Now, I know that you do a lot of um, demonstrations yes, as well, and I'm sure our viewers would love to hear about your demonstrations and where you have these demonstrations. Thank you. Um, I've always done my best to approach people, make myself available, and also to share my knowledge. So I've made an effort to have cooking classes and demonstrations at libraries here in mm -hmm. Victoria. Um, so it's an ongoing progress. I'm already booking uh, demonstrations for 2019, so they're free to attend and it's just for people who like uh, food, who love Malta but not everyone who is Maltese comes to them but you're welcome to come. Maltese Down Under thanks the Malta Tourism Authority, Mayfield's Business Advisors, MPD Steak Kitchen, Maltese Pasitsi Bar and Restaurant, First National Balkan Associates, Maltese Original Pasitsi Company, Smartline and our bronze sponsors.